Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your 2018 tarot forecast. It's Rena here. And just to let you know, I have a love uh, 2018 tarot forecast called New Year, New Love that is available on Vimeo. The link is below. Also, the link to my private readings are below. And the theme of both of these readings is going to be a combination of instructional as well as the typical classic predictive elements. And all of this is, I like to keep it as broad as possible since this is a general audience. And I also just ask you to um, have fun with it, not to uh, take it too seriously because um, the general readings, especially with tarot, which is so symbolic, is going to be open to interpretation for sure. And um, I created this spread, still have my notes to my side here, so I will let you know after I've laid out all the cards what each position will be. And some of these cards will be out of range. And when I get to them, I will definitely put the camera on them. So. Don't you worry. Wow, interesting. Awesome. Being a Sagittarian, I'm also interested in what these cards have to offer. Okay, so the top row are the influences from 2017 that either were very important events or they represent something that still is kind of un... I was going to say untied loose ends. I mean, loose ends that need to be tied. Let's put it that way. So one of them is the King of Pentacles. This may be that um, if you have been in business as someone, maybe this is an, an um, owner of a business, or the, I would say like someone who is either a business owner or they are the president of a bank it could be an older or mature chronologically older emotionally mature older male who is in a position of authority a boss a father an earth sign male Taurus Virgo or Capricorn Either, you you know, maybe it's the father of your child, if not your biological father. And this person somehow was very significant for you in 2017. Whether they are still in the picture is a different story, but it kind of has shaped your current circumstance in some way. Now, this is, by contrast, a younger male or a more immature male who may be a fire sign. Now actually this card is connected to Sagittarius at being one of the the uh, fire signs that the wands represent. I always like 
feel it is the sign of, um, whatchamacallit, Aries. But supposedly it is Sagittarius. This could be somebody, now, if those two people were actual romantic interests, this person may be more of a sexual attraction. Maybe you have a physical chemistry with this person, and the King of Pentacles is a more sober choice, someone who is more stable, but you can't resist this person. This person, though, has commitment issues. If this is you, Sagittarius, you may have been wanting to play the field. Maybe you um, got divorced from the King of Pentacles and now you are playing the field. And I could see if you were married to somebody who was a, an earth sign or had a lot of earth, you might have felt like it was a parent-child relationship where they were the sensible one and you were the silly Sagittarian who uh, your partner thought of as la uh, not lazy, but um, immature, irresponsible, things like that. And that might have caused problems because you, you know, Sagittarians have their own way of doing things, don't we? And as fire signs, we're very independent. And some people mistake that for being um, very noncommittal. I mean, uh, you know, afraid of committing. And it really isn't that case at all. It's just that we need that special kind of person who won't keep us under lock and key. And we need, you know, we need somebody who gives us a, um, gives us free reign. And it's also somebody that is like us who is a big dreamer. If, you're, if you were with somebody who was very practical and pragmatic, but they kind of scoffed at your dreams, you may feel like you're kind of uh, right now being set free. And sometimes that's a chaotic thing. The Knight of Wands can be kind of a chaotic energy where the person isn't really settled. But... It's almost like getting let out of prison in a sense. So uh, if you have felt like that in 2017, understand that it's not, um, it's just temporary. Uh, that kind of reaction is when somebody feels pent up, but they will uh, settle down eventually. Another card is Seven of Swords. So there may have been some theft that you experienced, either of physical property or of intellectual property so in the workplace somebody taking your plans ideas um, it could be like an obsessive lover that you had to kind of escape or that you are just just like what this card suggests that you're kind of uh, doing your own thing right now and that you know saying right now coming into 2018 And the last card that influences from the past is the Two of Swords, some kind of a stalemate, maybe that continues into 2018. Where do I want to live? What is it that I want to do? Maybe you, you are at a crossroads in your life, Sagittarius. And remember that we, ha we just had Saturn in Sagittarius. Um, you know, I wouldn't even, it's so funny because I wouldn't even be surprised if for some of you, um, this king of pentacles is really that Sagittarius, that Saturn and Sagittarius influence because the three earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, and Saturn is going into Capricorn. But, um, you know, the king of pentacles could show that transition at the end of twenty. 17 into Capricorn and away from the sign of Sagittarius and so maybe it you know for some people it's like finally you know two and a half years of feeling under lock and key in some way and the two of swords may be that you are at a crossroads where you're deciding okay now what what do I do maybe you want to move but you don't know where you have two different choices or there are two people Maybe it is one person is very responsible and one person is very 
freewheeling and you're, you can't decide between the two of them. Okay, now let's look at the themes for 2018. One of them is the King of Swords, another king. So when we're, again, talking about kings, we're talking about the ultimate in mastery and control. Now, if this is, a lot of the court cards can indicate actual people. This could be an older male who is an air sign. Libra, and maybe that was one of the people who we were talking about these swords that I got in the top row. Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. This person is a very logical, rational, um, I don't know if I should say rational about air signs. They're very abstract, but intellectual. And sometimes they can get too much so that they are too detached from their emotions. And, you know, fire signs are very passionate, and we feel, and this person may not be that way. Now, this could be a judge making a rational decision, so that could relate to some kind of divorce proceedings. If you are somebody who has um, experienced separation in 2017, you may have your divorce finalized. Uh, or it could be like even child custody issues. And um, with the King of Pentacles, that could be the, the male involved. And um, whether or not there is uh, some kind of issue, maybe you're with somebody who has a lot of money and they're trying to control you with it um, and say, oh, you want to leave me? Okay, you don't get anything. And you are feeling the sense of being manipulated. The Eight of Wands is a card of sudden events, like quickly coming together and you having to make snap judgments, maybe even like pick up and move. So I do think that for Sagittarians, it would be wise to get all of your affairs in order, everything, including your important documents, but, you know, maybe even if you have a lot of stuff that you don't need, maybe pare down your possessions, because it could be that in 2018, uh, something, some kind of an offer, some kind of a, a way out. Now, if you've been kind of on the fence about something, something may suddenly come through, and if you're not prepared to jump on it, uh, you could miss out on an amazing opportunity. I think this is kind of wise for a lot of people. I've been, you know, watching a lot of videos about minimalism, and it appeals to me from the standpoint of having that ability to be totally, what's that word, mobile where you can just, at a moment's notice, have all of your stuff ready and be able to take advantage of something that comes along and not be possessed by your possessions. So there could be sudden events. Maybe you feel like everything is at stalemate, as evidenced by the Two of Swords, and then phew, everything bursts right, wide open. The Emperor is another card that I kind of connect to the King of Swords, where it, it's, it could be like some person, authority figure, rendering a judgment. Now, the Emperor also connects to the military, um, to military personnel, and as well as uh, like law enforcement. Now, one possibility is that if you are someone who is involved with a person who is in the, you know, who's um, connected to the military in some way, maybe they're in the reserves, and then all of a sudden they get the call up, you have to accept that, and that may be difficult. Um, and, and the King of Swords may be that you have to summon up the courage and the ability to allow that person to do what they signed up to do. The emperor is also connected with the sign Aries, and I did mention with the Knight of Wands that that could be 
someone who is of the sign of Aries. At least that's how I see it. The other thing with 2018 is the Seven of Cups. So there may be more opportunities for you, and that's certainly with Saturn leaving Sagittarius, it may open up a lot more opportunities, um, especially at the end of 2018, uh, in November, I believe it's November 8th, that Jupiter goes into our sign, which is very exciting for the next, you know, for the rest of 2018 going into 2019. And that may be a very expansive influence. The, six, the Seven of Cups sometimes can be a card of daydreaming, wishful thinking, um, Lots of choices, but the person isn't necessarily looking at it from a pragmatic point of view, or maybe they are they need to make wise choices because sometimes with the Seven of Cups, you get offers, but they're not necessarily um, very viable ones. They may be kind of a con jobs, and that's kind of like with the Eight of Wands, even if you get like a sudden offer make sure that it's something that is real don't just jump at something because it sounds good because you could you know this has happened where people were told like they had this job offer and they maybe even overseas and they went and they and they went over there and it was just like a in some cases it can be very dangerous like you never know what you're getting into and um, so always double check, triple check, make sure that things are legitimate. And then these are like outside influences that can affect your situation. The six of wands can be a very good career time for you, recognition. And uh, I do believe it's connected to Leo, but that fire sign energy again. So in 2018, Sag we may be experiencing a lot of career success, but also a lot of, you know, like recognition. Other people like saying, I really like what you do. You're really good at it. Um, getting honors. And this could impact your life in some way. But perhaps if you were, let's say you were um, having a lot of career success, you may find that a relationship that you're in is... Um, being threatened because you're very busy with your career or that the other person gets jealous or envious I should say because you're in the you know in the limelight and they feel inferior to you there's all kinds of things that it can mean I do connect that that card to Leo and it's funny because then I get this so it might be timing issues in some cases um, the strength card is connected to to Leo, but it could be that, you know, I was just reading in one of my tarot books that the strength card can indicate like healing so that it indicates that in the past there was some kind of threat to your well-being and now you are recovering and you see we, we have these two cards and this could be coming from uh, other people giving you your props and that kind of um, allows you to understand how uh, talented you are when you may have doubted yourself and it's not that other people can really boost your self-esteem but really what happens from what I understand is that it whether you're falling in love or whether you're being recognized in some ways, Sagittarius. What it is, is is that that person is reflecting your innate, your innate goodness and, and talents back to you so that you can really um, receive them. Because a lot of times we internalize negative things. And so it takes other people saying, hey, you know, you're really good. At, you know, you're drawing. And somebody says, you're really a good artist. Or you're really, you know, you really cook good food. And it's like you need that outer thing because otherwise you might doubt yourself. But it's not that anybody can actually give you that self-esteem. That's the difference. They're just 
they're just echoing what is true innately, but that you may reject, push out of your consciousness because of your conditioning or what have you. And um, uh, the high priestess, this can be somebody who, like a guru or some kind of um, spiritual group practice that you belong to, that really has a positive influence. Now, when I uh, picked this card, I was thinking, yeah, you know, with this um, Jupiter in Scorpio, for Sagittarius, that is the 12th house. So uh, when Jupiter is in the 12th house, you may find that you are connecting with people that are in spiritual organizations who have that to show to you, to um, expand your life, improve your life. Uh, and it, it's just that it's something that is much more a part of your life during this uh, Jupiter transit than normal, but that it can really benefit you in the long run. And then we have the full card. And this, you know, typically what we say about the full card is that it's going off in a new direction. With it being an influence um, from an outer source, it could be like that you're moving to a new location and it's like you're starting all over again. And especially if you are on the older side, if you're in middle age or, or even older than that, that you are moving to a completely new area and it's like you're, you know, it's so cool because you're at the zero point where you're just completely exploring new terrain and you may have lived in one place for so long that you're finally going to um, be able to start all over again. That, I think for Sag, we are like, we love to hike and, and just have these adventures. And, um, and that's what that involves. It could also involve people that are quite um, unusual. Maybe they are nonconformists. So it could be finding your tribe because uh, Sagittarians tend to vibe with that as well. Now let's look at some of the pitfalls or challenges of 2018. The, the Ten of Cups is such a wonderful card, but I'm going to be reading it in the reverse position. There could be some kind of conflict within the family for some reason. Now obviously, if you're getting divorced, this could be a card of divorce, if it's in the reverse position, because in the upright, it's marriage. So um, that could, you know, obviously cause some kind of conflict within your family, uh, your immediate family or your family of origin with people that uh, disagree with your decision. Remember that we are all on our own journeys and nobody has the right to judge you about your decisions. I mean, they have the... You know, it's a free country, they can do whatever they want, but you don't have to allow another person's opinion of your life to negatively impact you. And you don't even have to defend yourself. Um, you, If you're an adult and you are making a decision that you feel is appropriate, then that's what it is. And uh, the Ten of Cups in the reverse position can, you know, it is a very positive card, so it may just mean delays in something that you really want to come true. So if, let's say, you were going to get engaged or get married, it, there might be something that comes in that prevents it from happening as soon as you want, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. And then we have the Ten of Wands, and this is a card of um, the burden of success as Anthony Lewis puts in his book uh, tarot what is it called um, tarot plain and simple and so it can be working very hard um, I do have these cards with the wands that can you know relate to career matters and it could be that you're really working uh, hard and you're having success but it's taking its toll so that could be something, you know, having these kinds of forecasts, if this seems like something that is plausible for you, to make a point ahead of time to have balance in your life because it isn't worth it if um, you experience burnout. And then 
the Page of Wands, this can be a card of something that you hear that is not necessarily what you wanted to hear. And um, in some cases, this can simply be that a new, maybe a new relationship that it could be with a fire sign is, again, delayed for some, for some reason. Sometimes it can be bad news. But understand that bad news is relative because it doesn't mean that it's going to be something terrible. It could simply mean that you experience a, disappoint, a, a disappointment, um, but I have a feeling that this is more of a delay. And delays, if you can get over the disappointment of not being able to do something when you want to do it, you may find in the long run that it was divine timing, okay? The advice for 2018 is represented by the Two of Cups. Again, for some people, that top row may actually indicate that there is someone that you need to commit to or that you should commit to. Maybe you are um, enjoying your freedom, but there's like a very uh, s solid, stable person and this is a card of commitment. This card can also be about reuniting with somebody. So if you are someone who broke up with someone, maybe even called a lawyer or who are about to get divorced, you might decide you might have second thoughts. The other thing is forgiveness. And I could definitely see forgiveness because some of these cards indicate that there may be some kind of challenges with um, the court system, and you may feel angry at this other person and feel like they are trying to destroy you. And maybe they are. But if you can see their own uh, sense of inadequacy or uh, what's that word that means, you know, that they don't feel empowered in their life. That's what a lot of times when people don't feel empowered, they try to seek revenge because that's the best they can, they can do. But that's really sad, you know, when somebody tries to hurt another person intentionally. So you don't have to you don't have to sink to anybody else's level if you f suspect that they're trying to do that. You can simply stay above the fray, uh, forgive them, not not. Uh, allow, in other words, not um, try to act like it's okay what they did, but just understand that they are suffering and they're in ignorance um, when they think that they can be happy by trying to hurt somebody else. And then you release any kind of bitterness, which is very important. The outcome is the Hermit card, and of course I got the High Priestess, for a lot of 2018, you may find comfort in solitude. Uh, with Jupiter in the 12th house, you may be less gregarious uh, than normal for you. I'm sure some of you are like me, and you're more introverted anyway, so it's like the Hermit card is an everyday occurrence for you. But it could be even like um, making a point of... Um, going to some kind of retreat center, maybe even on a regular basis, or, or some kind of like um, spiritual retreats that, that take place periodically for the weekend or what have you, and deepen your practice. Some people will be doing soul searching, uh, and this is kind of a new thing for them because they're getting more contemplative. And it's possible that things that have happened have caused you to become more philosophical. But also, one of the outcomes is the sun card. So we have a very internalized energy, and then we have the sun, which is uh, shining to everything. And, uh, you know, again, with this Leo. So I wonder if you're going to end up with a Leo person. But maybe that Leo period is a very important one in 2018 for you. The period either there's a lunar eclipse in Leo on January 31st, maybe that's a turning point, or in the new moon is in August in Leo, 
Maybe that's an, is an important time for you. And Leo is a fellow, fellow uh, fire sign. So um, that's a harmonizing influence, a trine. And um, of course, we've had the North Node in Leo. So all of these things may conspire to, for Sag to experience a lot of um, expansion. For us, this Leo energy is in the ninth house, which is our natural house, and it has to do with long distance travel and philosophical God matters, religious matters, publishing and things like that. So maybe all of these things will be the outcome for you in 2018, Sag. Uh, love, children, and just general healing, happiness, prosperity. I'll take it. What about you? Okay, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Happy New Year. Bye.